It's there. We all have a purpose and every group of people has a purpose. There's a purpose that brings them together. It's about discovering it. And what that is, and to discover it, you've got to discover what makes you unique. In what way are you as an individual or your team or your company? In what way are you different from, from any other? Welcome, David, and we are grateful to have you here today and speak about leadership. Would you start us off with a little bit about your leadership background? Thank you, Thirsty. Thanks, thanks for, for having me and for, for organizing this podcast. Wonderful to have the opportunity to, to speak to you. My background in, in this particular area of work came when I realized that, and now we're going back in nearly 30 years, that the world would be facing some interesting challenges over the then next 20 years or so, I thought. And I got together a group of CEOs and various different business leaders, a few academics. I was in South Africa at the time. South Africa itself was going through major transformation at that time. It was the end of apartheid. It was the beginning of a democratic period. So the country was changing. Society was changing. Business was changing. And looking ahead and seeing so much change ahead, I got this group together to look at what are likely to be some of the biggest challenges going forward. And how might we address them in ways that the world wasn't addressing them at that time? Uh, and we looked at a number of things. And one of the issues that came up was clearly how we were going to enable continued and, in fact, accelerated innovation and productivity without squeezing people dry, without draining people of their energy. We were going to need more and more from people. That was becoming clear. As technology became more and more of a factor in business and in production, it became clear that the role of people would change and we would be called upon to do more and more with less and less. Uh, and how do we do that with people and still keep people engaged and, and keep people inspired? Uh, and that really became the essence of it. What could we do? What element is there to, by which to increase productivity without draining people? On the contrary, and what we came to and what I developed at that time was a method of leadership that inspired people with a sense of value and purpose, and that every business can find the purpose of its existence, the higher purpose of its existence. Uh, I've always believed that people don't come together by random chance. If a group of people come together to form a business or to run a business, to manage a business, there's a reason why that particular group of people come together. And if a business is created or has evolved and developed over a period of time, it has a, a role to play in the world more than just making the widgets that it makes. It's there to do something more than that uh, for all its stakeholders, for the people it employs, for the societies it serves, for the customers it, it serves, for the investors who invest in it. It just has so much more able to be aspired to than just the making of money. And once we developed that approach and we were able to link people into that, meaning that I'm able to find my sense of purpose through working for this particular company, much as a physician or a nurse might find in, in the medical profession. It's not just a matter of doing it to earn a living. The people who work in the medical profession have a much higher sense of purpose. The same applies in business. If one can tap into that higher sense of purpose of what is this business really here to do? In what way are we here to change the world? And that aligns with my personal sense of purpose then I'm much more willing to engage and to give of myself and to apply my mind and, and to apply my feelings and emotions and energy uh, to be able to innovate and to produce. And, and that's really been the focus of the work. This is exciting, especially 20 years ago. You already began working on things that are really important right now as the world has changed and we've experienced the shutdown through COVID and a variety of things have happened and technology has boomed in the last 20 years. How does a company, so many companies are looking to move from just getting their employees to do the work and work in home separation. Somehow things are blending even more. Many people are working from home and some are in the office. How does a company begin to shift um, I know in my personal experience, we believed in productivity, and productivity meant people worked 40 hours, 60 hours, and they were dedicated to the work, so we met the bottom line. So now, we've, if that's the culture that we have in a company, how do we shift, and how do we figure out what is our 
motive? What is our focus? What is that vision purpose? What's well, important, I, I, I think, is at least two phases, maybe maybe more than that. The first is to discover this, that sense of purpose. And the other is then to pivot the company into a purpose-driven company. Just having a purpose doesn't mean that the company becomes purpose-driven. I think the first thing is for the company to realize we don't take our eye off profits. Profits still are, are incredibly important because you can't sustain an organization if it's not profitable. So being efficient and being effective at what one is doing, whether you're running a hospital or you're running uh, a, a car manufacturing business, it doesn't matter. If it isn't going to be efficient and profitable, it isn't going to be sustainable. So that's an important part of it. But what we try and help people understand is the difference between driving your business by the numbers and measuring your business by the numbers. It's a little bit like if you're driving your car a long distance and on, on one of the freeways and you're off to see your elderly aunt whose 80th birthday it is, that's the purpose of your drive. Now you're still watching the clock, you're watching your speedometer, you're calculating what time you're going to get there. You're watching all those numbers. You're watching your, your fuel gauge. If the fuel gauge is going down, you're going to have to do something about that. Your eye is constantly on on all the different dials that tell you how you're doing. But you don't forget the reason you're, you're going, the reason that you're driving and what's motivating you and making it worthwhile for you is the visit to your elderly aunt. It's not the speed at which you're going. It's not the time that you're going to get there, but those things are just equally important. And so it is with a business. You, business leaders need to be watching the metrics all the time because if something's not right, you're going to see it in the metrics and that has to be corrected. But that isn't what, what can inspire people. People aren't inspired by balance sheets. Maybe there are a few accountants that get excited by, by balance sheets, but most people aren't inspired by numbers. They're not inspired by spreadsheets. People are inspired by the value of what they're adding and what they're bringing to the world, what they're bringing to people. When I talk about bringing to the world, it doesn't have to be changing the entire world. Sometimes a person's purpose might be something relatively small, but with big impact. So let us say, for example, you were to ask Einstein's mother what her purpose was, and she were to say, to raise my son to be the best he can possibly be. That's all I want to be doing. One wouldn't say to her, well, that's a bit of a waste of time. Can't you think of something bigger or more worthwhile to do? That did change the world. In defining our purposes, whether as individuals or as a business, it doesn't have to be to change the world in the, in the biggest kind of way. And you have visionaries who do have that kind of sense of purpose. You have an Elon Musk, and you have a Steve Jobs, and you have a Bill Gates, and these were people who did, right in the very beginning, have these very big visions of how the world could be different, and they work towards that. But most people don't have that scale of vision, and they don't need to have that scale of vision, but there needs to be a sense of, I'm doing something valuable. I'm doing something valuable for a person, or for people, or for society. Just, I'm doing something valuable for somebody other than me or a purpose uh, that, that is higher than me, uh, so that a person doesn't become self-centered and self-driven in their, in their business activities, but rather working towards something bigger and something higher. That's inspirational for people. Those are the steps. Firstly, one would have to say, you, you asked, how do we get to discovering the purpose? And there we have an interesting approach. I've always thought that purpose is not something that you create. It's not something that you design. It's there. We all have a purpose, and every group of people has a purpose. There's a, there's a purpose that, that brings them together. It's about discovering it and what that is. And to discover it, you've got to discover what makes you unique. In what way are you as an individual or your team or your company? In what way are you different from, from any other? And there you'll look at things like your capacities, what it is that you're able to do, the mix of capacities. If you take a, a, a leadership team of, an, of a business, and you figure out who are these people at the, at the essence. And I believe, I'm sure you do too, that there are no two people who are identical and there have never been. There's never been an, another you, and there's never been another me, and there never will be. As unique as we are, if three of us get together or 10 of us get together, that is something that is so unique that is, there's nothing in the world in, that, that can come anything close to that. Now, how do we use that? How do we say these 10 people that have come together can do something that nobody else can do and try and understand what it is, what capacity do you have? What are we passionate about? What are the things that drive us? And who are the people that we're passionate about serving? Who, who are the people that we want to be serving? And can we define that? So we take companies through a process to be able to discover their purpose, not create their purpose. So it sounds like there is a process in place and it's just, it takes time. It takes 
intention and it takes a lot of discovery and figuring out exactly what your strengths are. And you speak about the 10 or 20 folks that come together and it sounds like the strength base or the strength each person brings adds such a great value to an organization. If you like the content of this video, please don't forget to follow. And also, if you want more information, visit the website yogi.com.